welcome to Gen365 podcast. This is an initiative of Beyond the Veil Mission. And this is a podcast for the community to empower a generation of healing and hope 365 days of the year. Come. How everyone is doing today conversation will be, you know, working moms. And when we say working moms, you know, I think all moms are working moms because the job is yeah. not in the office. You know, any mom, anywhere you are, you have your business in your home, everywhere. We are all working moms. Um, yes, that's the conversation. And uh, we are so really, really extremely blessed. We're going to do two podcasts with Michaela. So, yeah, the next one is going to be a surprise. Stay tuned. However... I need to welcome our special guest today, Michaela. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I am so glad to have this conversation with you. Especially the thing that I love is the fact that we are in our pajamas. We should have really recorded a video of this conversation because, yeah, this is, I think, when our kids go to sleep moms all the time you know i was sending this video to my son i'm like this this lady was showing what she does after the kids go to sleep which started yeah. scrolling down and checking all the social media i'm like yeah this is a moment for ourselves so yeah before we start the conversation i just need to know for our listeners yeah I'd like to know michaela mutoni Tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, tell them who you are so they can connect with you. Okay. Um, so I'm Randy, like you. Do we say Randy or Randan? One of the two. You know, I'm um, always uh, confused. Is it Randy or Randan? It depends on the mood. I go okay. with either one. Um, I was born in Burundi, though, um, mm-hmm. because of our history. And then... In 1995, we moved to Rwanda, um, lived there till 2002, where we moved to Germany. Uh, mm-hmm. So we lived in Germany for four years, and then we moved to Senegal. Mm-hmm. And I lived there for two years, and then I moved to Canada. Mm-hmm. So we've moved around a lot. And in Canada, I lived in Montreal, I lived in Toronto, now I'm in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. And so I really think of myself as like a third culture kid I don't know if you know the term yet but it's basically like people who have had their formative years outside of their home country Mm -hmm. and I think it's important in the context of this conversation to set that in place Um, because I think that how I approach my life and how I approach motherhood is like a mix of all the different things I've seen around while we're growing up and it's not necessarily what I would call like, I guess, like traditionally Canadian or like traditionally Rwandan. It's more like, let's just try to figure out what works for you. Yes. Uh, and then go from there. So I work in tech. I uh, have a husband. Uh-huh. His name is Sicho. We love um, to hear that. <laughs> he's from Ghana, mm-hmm. uh, but he also grew up in Oman. So we agree mm-hmm. on the, the fact that we kind of grew up outside. Mm-hmm. And then we have a son together. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name is Imena, Imena Christie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's 17 months and he's such a little funny kid. Yes. Um, so it's, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been an adventure, girl. Hey, it's been an adventure. <laughs> but <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. But we'll get, we'll get into all that. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. that's why I'm, then what else? Oh, I really like, um, I, I guess, empowering people. You mentioned my Instagram, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so for me, it's like life is, is there to, for us to, to kind of learn. And I, I'm the type of person who I like to think about what's going on and then kind of share insights, mm-hmm. um, of, of what I learn with people. So that's why you always get like these random Instagram stories of, of what's been on my mind. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's like, if I went through it, why my, why can I not try to make it better for the next person, right? Yes. And then I, I always have very good conversations after because 
people share their insights and then I learn a couple of things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm really about trying to help us, especially like women, African women, succeed in this environment that we live in, right? Because for most of us, we're just trying to figure it out, man. Mm -hmm. Like we just feel like, help me, help me. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So that's me in a nutshell. Thank you so much. So I, I think um they're going to get to know you more as we have this conversation. And oh. yeah, I think to start our conversation, I want to play a game with you. Okay. Okay. So I are you aware of the Would You Rather games? Yes. Okay. You get 15 to 20 seconds to give me an answer for these questions, you know, um, don't think too much, just whatever comes first in your mind. You know, we just want to see, uh, one day if we want to surprise you, if you want to spoil you, or is your family listening? They gotta, they better listen so they can know the options of Michaela. Okay. Okay. So, so I just answered the question. Yeah. I, I just answered the question. I don't justify it, right? I no, just don't answer. justify, just choose. Okay. Just choose. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's do it. Okay, first question. So this is a would you rather game. We're going to have how many questions? Give me a second. Okay, let's go. So first question, would you rather? So would you rather have unlimited paid maternity leave or a personal assistant to help you with childcare and household tasks? Personal assistant. (laughs) Okay, same. Okay, same. No, I'd pay the maternity leave, great, uh, paid my unlimited pay maternity leave, but you are struggling by yourself. It's okay. I'll, I'll take the but, but the first one. Have money, please take the money. Give me an assistant. <laughs> okay, husband, family. I hope you're listening. Would you rather have a high-powered career, but be away from home frequently, or? A less demanding job that allows for more time with family. That one was hard for me. Less demanding for a limited period of time. <laughs> While the kids are small. I want high powered from home. <laughs> That's what I want. Okay, okay. Okay, I love that. Women are gonna choose what we're gonna choose. I love that. <laughs> Okay, so would you rather have the ability to perfectly balance work and family life or have all the knowledge and skills needed to excel in both areas without any struggle? The second one. I want the knowledge and the skills to excel in both without struggling. (laughs) Who wants to struggle? Mm -mm. Okay. Would you rather have a supportive network of fellow working moms to lean on for advice and help or have a substantial financial pressure to provide for any necessary support you might need? <laughs> Why are you laughing? You already know you already know the answer. Me, I want the financial question. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I think this is going to make the next conversation interesting because, you know. Which, 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 which one would you choose? Would you choose, which one would you choose? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, in this economy, no. Exactly, exactly. No. <laughs> Friends, I love you, but give me that money, please. Give me that money so I can pay for spa, put my kids in program. You know, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's it's really interesting. Okay, last would you rather. Okay. I think I'm going to put this would you rather questions in our stories. I want to see what other moms are thinking because this is so fun. Would you That's rather have your children understand and appreciate the challenges of your career path or have them prioritize their own personal happiness and the success above all else. I want them to prioritize their success and happiness. Yeah. yeah I want it to be about, about them, right? Like they Absolutely. were not there when I was making my choices. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay, that's really great. Thank you so much. I, I think we we picked a thing or two, and we know the next baby shower, we know what to do. A personal assistant, okay? You know what? I've heard actually some people are doing it in baby shower. Yeah. Instead of buying gifts, they're actually putting together money to hire someone who can cook for at least two months for the mother when they have the baby, someone who can clean for them for maybe three months. I was like, okay, I'm ready to have another baby. If I, can. I think that's what I will do when we are ready for the second one. I'm going to be like, guys, I don't need gifts. Give me cash so I can go hire help. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyhow, so our conversation, you know, we were inspired, I think, thinking about this conversation, following your stories. Um, you always, most of the time, not always, but, you know, they, sometimes you share with us your journey as a mom, working mom, uh, especially killing it, doing the work. You know, we want to know. We want to know how you are doing it <laughs> because sometimes, especially some moms can feel like, you know, when they start having babies, feel like, you know, they're being left out. They can keep up with career, families, yeah. and, you know, there's a lot. But as a working mom, can you work, um, um, can you work us through your day as a working mom, you know, who's pursuing her career, career, we're making an impact in our communities. So how is your day look like? I know it might be different, but yeah um, yeah of course so i am very lucky mm -hmm. that i sit on my husband he's very involved mm -hmm. like he's really involved with dimena he's really involved with um the things at home so i don't really feel like i do it alone so in the morning he's an early riser and i am not like me yeah, I, I i like my sleep i need my sleep yeah <laughs> um so he takes care of the baby in the morning. Like mm -hmm. he will, he will uh, wake him up, give him breakfast, get him ready to go to school. Mm -hmm. And so that helps me kind of sleep in a little longer. And then I get up and they're about to go out and then he goes and he drops him off. And so I have slow mornings. Like um, yes. I love them. I take my time and then I get ready for work. And then mm -hmm. I'm lucky that I work from home as well. Mm -hmm. 90 percent of the time I work from home mm -hmm. and so normally I would just come in like my home office and then I would mm -hmm. work and then in the afternoon that's when I'm usually like yeah so it's not big about what we're gonna eat now mm -hmm. you know uh and so around 4 35 I will either go down and cook dinner mm -hmm. um or if we ordered food, warm up while we ordered it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the evening is usually me that spends a lot of time with the baby. So, because he usually works late. Mm -hmm. So he'll come home and I'll take care of him, give him dinner, give him a bath, put him to bed. Mm -hmm. And I, at the beginning, I really found that period hard. Eh? Like even yes. now, like that period between 4.35 and 7 p.m., Mm -hmm. Because it's like you're trying to make sure there is food to eat. You're trying to feed the child. Mm -hmm. The child wants to hang out with you because they haven't seen you mm -hmm. the whole day, right? And you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. but we got to eat because you're going to be cranky. Um, anyways, and then he goes to sleep. And then like we were talking about earlier, that's when my day starts. My mm -hmm. evening starts. Because then when he's sleeping, that's when I will usually work on like my side hustle stuff, work on some podcast stuff for my mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. And then we have the evenings. So the weeks are very busy. It's just kind of like go, go, go. Like yes. put him in daycare, get him out mm -hmm. of daycare, do dinner, bedtime. Mm -hmm. And then the weekends are usually like Saturdays. We usually have some family or friends event. Uh, and then we do groceries. And then Sunday, it's usually the little kind of rest day <laughs> where mm -hmm. you get ready for the week again. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, that's, that's how it works. Like during the day is when I work on my job and in the evening between 8 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. is when yes. I work on like Instagram stuff and mm -hmm. podcast stuff. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm really, um, when I listen to your daily routine, you know, yeah. especially having a child involved, you mentioned that everything goes so fast. Like, you know, yeah. 
I, I, oh, I think one person were having a conversation with someone saying, well, I don't understand why this woman stopped doing things about herself. Now it looks like she's just a mom. I'm like, raising kids, you wake up, you give them breakfast, lunch, they take a nap, it's 7 p.m. It's, yep. you have no, like, you like, what happened? So I think many moms can really relate to you. And I can hear a lot yourself, uh, your husband, and then the child. And then you mentioned family, friends on the weekend. Um, it's like, you know, it's like all these demands in a week, in a month, and we have to respond to them. Uh, honestly, God bless the moms. I'm curious to know, do you ever um, experience some challenges, especially as a working mom, trying to advance your professional life? Do you, you know, you mentioned that you have support from your, your husband. That's really yeah. good. But do you ever face challenges? Yeah, time. Right. I feel like there isn't enough time in the day. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, as I was telling you about my weekend, I was like, yeah, my weekend sounds lighter than what it is. It, it truly is. But it's because mm -hmm. I hadn't counted the nap times. I hadn't counted the fact <laughs> that you have to go to the park, <laughs> the park. So you get out of the house. Right. Because baby starts to get antsy in the house. Like having a child is a full time job. Right. Yeah. So. I think I was talking to another mom earlier today and we we're saying how laundry now takes three days to do, you know, before you used to be able to just do it in one go. Mm -hmm. But now it takes three days because first of all, there is so much, but mm -hmm. also because you get interrupted, right? Yes. Um, so one day you're going to be washing and then it's going to sit there for another day. And then the third day you're going to maybe fold it and, and put it away, right? So I think for me and like for many other parents, time is the biggest uh, problem. And then also because mine is still small and he's in daycare, mm -hmm. he gets sick, he gets sick, right? And so that means like, oh, he's going to be at home. And so if he's at home, then who's looking after him, right? Yes. Is it me or is it my husband? And mm -hmm. right now we both work from home, so we kind of split it. But those are the type of choices or demands mm -hmm. that depending on the type of career that you have, um, it can impact where you want to go and where you want to be, right? So for me, I'm lucky that right now it's fine. Like where I am, everybody has a family and they respect mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been a problem. But yeah, time, I would say, is the biggest challenge. Like I used it's... to have this goal of like working out five days a week. <laughs> <laughs> you are still working out raising Imena and... Uh going to the park, uh, standing, cooking, washing the baby. That's, that's workout. That's. <laughs> and then I had to sit down and say, okay, you have many goals. Which one do you want to prioritize? You know? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So now I try to do two or three times, not five. Cause I was yes. like, it's fine. You know? Yeah. So, but you have to make choices. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're having conversation with, uh, some of the young, um, people from our community and I was sharing with them, like, you know, I think if it was in the real world and there were all the possibilities when moms are raising their children, I think in a real world, we have a good support system, no yeah. financial issues. It would be easier yeah. for moms to just focus on the babies at least yeah. until they're maybe, they go maybe to school, kindergarten, something like that, because just raising your children takes a lot. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you had to prioritize, you know, five days or maybe three days. Yeah. So I can, yeah, that's great. So, and, oh, I wanted to share this piece as well on the laundry piece. I used to do a lot of laundries, like, my two boys, they go to the school, they have uniform. But tell me how every other day their laundry bin is full. I'm like, what is going on? So now one time my all the laundry machine and the dry machine, they they just stopped working. Oh no. I got the laundry machine and the dry machine stopped working. In the oh, no. midst of trying to find another one. I was like, you know, I went to pay money to wash clothes outside. 
it's expensive. I'm like, of course. Three hundred dollars. I'm like, this is crazy. Hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do laundry every day and then air um air dry the clothes because I'm like, you know, it's summer. Then I started doing laundry every day, not just the weekend. Actually, I yeah. find it so much easier because every day is just less clothes. You fold them in about five minutes, and it's gone. Then I'm I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna continue the routine. That's one piece. I think sometimes we share some of the tips that what works for me. It might not work for you, but you know, sometimes you never know who that can help. So I need to know, you know, you are a new mom. You have, you know, one son so far. And, you know, is there anything? Cause, you know, yeah. motherhood, as much as you yeah. prepare yourself, there are always surprises, yeah. but is yeah. there that you have you wish you have known or understood better about motherhood yeah. you know balancing career before you started the family so it's interesting because i had even at 32 so mm-hmm. i waited uh, a long time mm-hmm. and the advantage in that well waited it was partly a choice partly life but um the advantage in that is that i had a lot of moms of friends who became moms before me so i could learn from them but the one thing I did not prepare for was EI, employment insurance. <laughs> I did not understand. I didn't understand how EI was. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I didn't understand that it was capped at a certain salary range. Oh, right? I think okay. Like 70K or 75K or something like that. And then mm-hmm. it's a certain percentage percentage depending what province you live in like it's higher in Quebec where I was before than and it's lower in Ontario Mm -hmm. so for me I thought it was a percentage of your salary so for the longest time I knew I wanted children so and I knew I would go on mat leave and so for me it was very important to go on mat leave Mm -hmm. when I felt like I was at a level of Mm -hmm. income and a level of career Yes. That I, I I was comfortable with because there is mm-hmm. always that fear that once you have children your career will stagnate a little bit and so for yes. me it was like well if I'm gonna stagnate let me stagnate at a comfortable level you yes. know mm-hmm. so I was aiming for income and then mm-hmm. I go in the eye and I realize my income doesn't matter anyway because I'm capped yes. mm-hmm. and so that was like a wake up call and then from that the lesson, lesson was like outside. oh maybe I should have chosen a better company right like a company with better benefits yes because you know um companies especially private companies if that's the space you're in they do like maternity top up yes. to uh complement the employment insurance you're gonna get and so i had not paid attention to that like oh, i had I no idea that attention. that's something existed in the first place thank you for sharing yeah, so this is in the private space. So yeah. if you work for like a corporation, for a bank, banks are really good. Yeah. Um, for a tech company like myself. So what they will do is that they will top up the difference. Yes. So they will take the, what EI gives you and then they will calculate the gap to your salary and they will give it to you. Oh um, my God. As a ma- yeah, as a maternity leave benefit. And so I mean tech, so a lot of tech companies, they, give you six months or they will make sure that you have six months pay on your, on your, on your mat leave or, or five oh. months. But where I was before, they gave you three, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, when you're on mat leave, Sha, like there's a big difference between three months of full pay and six months yes. of full pay, yes. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something I wish I had paid more attention to, like, mm-hmm been calculated a little bit more like what's the actual financial impact mm-hmm. of me being on maternity leave you know um like when I was on maternity leave I was like oh wow I understand why to work for the government because <laughs> um, mm-hmm. then that's when I started learning like government workers they make like 90 percent of their pay mm-hmm. I was like hey, what yeah um, government benefits they are yeah. really great even like uh healthcare wise Mm-mm. they are really really yeah. good yeah yeah so I, I had paid attention to like oh my rsp like matching right like the fact that mm-hmm. my company matches to a certain percentage 
I mm. paid a lot of attention to other things, but I hadn't paid attention to what are the maternity benefits? Are there any? How much are they? Yes. How do they compare to the competition? Because had I realized that before, I would have changed jobs. Like I would have yeah. been like, no, I'm going to go choose a better company, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Or I would have saved better. Like I feel like we would have been more organized yes. <laughs> um, financially mm-hmm. before I, I went on mat leave. But, you know, mm-hmm. you live and you learn. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really, thank you for sh- bringing that perspective because, I think most of us preparing to have mother, uh, to, to become mothers, I think really we, we think about that aspect. Yes, for sure. Um, we think about the financial needs, but not in the way of really making sure that if there is any benefit, we are able to, um, uh, to find them and benefit from them. And I believe that sometimes maybe people might even not know that their company have different benefit from them because one yeah. person once shared as well now when you're looking for new jobs i'm saying this because yesterday you were sharing how right now it is important for people who are looking for new jobs it's a great season especially companies are wrapping up their either fiscal year or whatever i have no idea what you were saying however i think uh, when you were sharing that i remember someone saying now, when you get a job somewhere, don't just get limited to uh, the benefits, healthcare, dental, all of that. Ask more. Ask more, you know, about other benefits they can do yeah. or give you differently from other companies. So that's a really good one. You should do a short video on that Instagram of yours to remind mom to look for those jobs that were. Oh, girl, you know, I have a whole series planned. Please hold me accountable. I have a list. I just have to sit down and do it. Like things I learned while having a child that I didn't know. Here you go. You know, it's going to happen. I have to prioritize it. Okay. Are you being a perfectionist? Like trying to? Uh, Yes and no. So, yes, part of me is a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. But then another part of me is like, you know, um, in Rwanda, like, it's very, like, you don't want to be visible, right? It's very much like, that's the term, right? Like, don't put your business out there. Don't talk about what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. I was very much raised like that. So for yeah. me, when yeah. I come out and I'm like, hey, guys, this is yeah, what's yeah. really happening. Like, mm-hmm. it's uh, there is a big cultural clash a little bit mm-hmm. uh, that, that I struggle with a lot. So mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. still learning how to get over that because mm-hmm. I think it's important to share our experiences. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I can tell you, there is really, uh, I learned, I always learned so much from my younger sister. She's an entrepreneur. She really yeah. has so much experience. Two things, I always learn a thing or two every time we talk. She told me, especially when I wanted to be engaged in the community work, podcast anything she's like if you start perfect you are late don't always try to see okay podcast trust me Mikhail. i have all the microphone i have so many things none of it it's been like i have it for a long time but i'm not ready i haven't been able to put everything together to put the studio together but i'm like if i wait until the whole studio is together microphones, all these, you know, tools, you know, why do I have to? So I think that piece really helped me. You know, everyone is going to have opinion. Oh, Lydia, if you can do your podcast like this and that, that can be better, but trust me. Then you start looking at the people listening to your podcast. Like it's been maybe two months since we took a break from the podcast. And I see people keep listening. I'm like, what are you listening? So I think just go there. Let me tell you, I really watch few people's stories on Instagram and you are one of them. Can I tell oh. you? Because, because you give us content and you can understand that. Okay, me, I'm not a hater, okay? I'm a supporter. But the majority of people who are going to listen to your stuff are the people who do not support you, do not like what you do. So that means our friends, our families, really, they listen to our stuff, they watch our stuff. 
But most of the time, people are like, you know, what is she doing? Oh my God, those are the people bringing up the views, helping your message to get, you know, far. So just bring those videos, however they are, you know, those podcasts, just throw them out there. We need them. Thank you for that. Thank you for the encouragement. I'm actually starting an accountability mm. group with a friend of mine to hold me accountable. So you'll see it. It's coming. I have to make the jump. I'll do it. Awesome. Awesome. Accountability, trust me. That's, I always tell people therapy is there and everything, but you need accountability. You got to make sure that there is something in every season, someone who's going to really remind you. Gary girl. Anyhow. Yeah. One interesting topic, and I love it because when we're doing the Would You Rather, we kept coming back to money, financial support, and I think many moms can relate. We we'll give you options, right? But then we often hear it takes a village to raise a child, right? Um, I remember when I had my first son in Rwanda, I had a huge support. I think it took me maybe two months to give a, a shout to my baby because I had someone all the time who was helping me. Oh, just raised. We're going to uh, bath the baby. Don't worry about it. You know, until I got to Canada and had my two other boys, the village was no longer the village. So this is no longer a reality to many people. Actually, even in one of the many moms, when you talk to them, it's no longer the reality. So in your experience, how is it important to have a supportive system in place as a working mom? And have you ever involved finances to create that support? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, okay, so let's start. I think it's about expectations, right? Mm -hmm. And making sure your expectations are met. Uh, for me, I don't need a lot of friends. Like... Mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people, but if I can have like two, three good, really good friends, I have more friends than that. But mm -hmm. if I can have like one deep conversation a week, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, and so as I was thinking about this, I think you need three types of friends. And so you need the friend who has older children than you. And mm -hmm. this can be like a, 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 an, an occasional touch base, like yes. monthly touch base or every couple of weeks. And then they're good because they put things in perspective, you know, like I, I, I did, a, I shared a reel the other time about how toddlers are stuck to us and they don't leave you, you know, like you're just carrying them all the time. And like, Imena is getting super heavy, mm -hmm. but he wants me to keep carrying him. And I, mm -hmm. and my friend was like, enjoy it because in a few years, he won't even want you to touch him. You know, like that's me. I'm she, begging for hugs right now. <laughs> yeah. And that's where she is right now. And so, once she said that, I was like, okay, you know, like she kept me rooted in the present. Mm -hmm. And that's support for me. Mm -hmm. At least it's mm -hmm. like, it's a reminder, right? And then you need friends who have kids your age, who understand the struggle, mm -hmm. you know, where you can compare notes and say, how, is, how are the naps going? How is the food going? Like people mm -hmm. you can talk to. And then you need the friend who cares about the same thing as you. So mm -hmm. for example, me, I like to work. I like having a career. I like hustling. Like, I don't like that term anymore. I like building something. Yes. So I need mothers. Like I need, I need, they don't need to be mothers. I need women like that around me who will help me have a, an adult conversation that doesn't involve mm -hmm. babies. Yes. You know, <laughs> and sometimes you will speak to other women and like their whole life is their children. Yes. They don't care about work. They don't care mm -hmm. about anything. Like mm -hmm. if they could stay at home and take care of the house and do that, that would be their perfect life. Mm -hmm. And I respect that, but that is not me, you yeah. know? So I need someone I can have, um, a, like a business focused conversation with. Yes. And so I'm okay having that. I, I, I'm okay having those conversations like every once in a while. Now, the whole idea of taking a village to raise a child. Me, I use money or like <laughs> I have. Mm -hmm. I have a cleaner. Like yeah. I have, I have a cleaner. She mm -hmm. she comes every two weeks, mm -hmm. and she helps us kind of do like a deep clean of the house. Mm -hmm. We also order food. Um, like uh, we try different food services. Like for example, there is one called Porta 
in mm-hmm. Toronto. It's Italian, so they do pastas and pizzas. So we got tired of that after a while. Right now we're trying a, uh, another one called We Cook. They have a bit of like more choices in health and healthier food. Mm-hmm. We're doing that. I know in Ottawa there's a lady who comes to your house and she cooks and yeah. then you store. Mm-hmm. I might try that once. Um, but I try to, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'm lucky that we do have a little bit of disposable income so I can afford a cleaner every two weeks yes. and we can order food and it's not the end of the world. But mm-hmm. for me, it's really important because remember we talked about how the biggest constraint is time. Yes. For me, it's really important to try to create some time. Yes. Um, so that you can try and enjoy, enjoy Absolutely. time with your kids and enjoy time with your spouse you know mm-hmm. and 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 I think for me the wake up call and then I'll, I'll wrap it up the wake up call for me was I went to Rwanda when I was on maternity leave yes and I was catching up with my girlfriends who have families mm-hmm. and they were telling me how tired they are you yes. know and I was looking at them like you're tired but you have a cook mm-hmm. and you have um a cleaner, like you have at least two two house help in your mm-hmm. house, right? And you're tired. And so for me, and I I'm and I and I'm not discounting their experiences and mm-hmm. I know like staff management is another type of challenge. Mm-hmm. Um but I was like if they have support, if they have the personal yes. assistance mm-hmm. that we were talking about and they're still tired, mm-hmm. then it's normal for us to be exhausted. Mm-hmm. Right? Because we are doing the work of like two, three people. And yet we have these expectations of ourselves that we are supposed to do everything and it's going to be fine. But it's Mm -hmm. like, no, girl, like it is not going to be fine. You're one person. Mm -hmm. So prioritize where Mm -hmm. you want to spend your time when you can. And then um, and and then try to outsource the rest if you can. Yeah, I believe in outsourcing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I think you shared two important perspectives. And I think one is like, you know, another angle of seeing a supportive system. Or sometimes you can think of a supportive system as a mom, someone who can take your child for two days so you can rest, which is good as well. But then you share like, you know, mothers with, you know, that you share, uh, same, uh, you have uh, similar things in common, like, you know, uh, kids of the same age, maybe moms with like, you know, um, older kids, things like that. Yeah. How it can, cause we can meet moms who can be like, Oh, don't hold your baby a lot. You're going to make them more no. spoiled and more attached to you. But then you have another mom reminding you, girl, you better really use that time. Cause like, you know, I have three boys, 16, 12, eight. Now 16 to 12. I have to really pull them to hug them. No, you're going to hug me. You're going to hug me by force, you know, because at some point, I'm, at, at the same time, like, you know, no, they can't forget that they have to give a hug to their mom because for me, hug is love. Hug is cure. Yeah. My boys need that hug, you know, here and there. But the youngest yeah. is so attached to me, like, so, so, so. And I'm like, now that I'm really missing the two, I'm now understanding how important it is He's eight now. I'm like, oh my God, soon he's going to stop. But I'm like, let me really, really use this time. So I think that's really a good thing. I'm looking how a supportive system can look like, especially when we become moms. I think motherhood can also isolate you, right? In a way that you focus on your just family, you same routine, things go fast. But when you have friends like that, you shared another thing, a friend who's not even into ma- motherhood, maybe not even have kids, who can really yeah. help you to have another, uh, be in another environment. Me and my best friend, we used to always, every weekend, look for our friends who do not have babies. If you have a baby, yeah. we are not visiting you. And we are not visiting you. And everybody knew us, if you call or come visit we don't have to come back. We're going to go somewhere yeah. else. And we had something maybe once a month. We actually sleep over to one of our friends who has have no babies. And it was That's actually amazing. a moment to recharge. So thank you. Yeah. And it takes a village. It can be more yeah. than people. If you can, things you say like, you know, um, paying for someone to clean my house. I think yeah. with the, it can be challenging. Sometimes people don't have, you know, yeah, money to do it. 
But something yeah. I've learned as well, sometimes you're going to do what you're going to do because sometimes you're going to yeah. choose between your health and paying someone. Sometimes it can be maybe once every five months. You have don't have to do every month, but once mm-hmm. every five months, have someone come to a deep clean or maybe uh, me and my friend, we used to exchange uh, uh, support in a way. One, me and her at that time, we had how many kids combined? Five kids. So mm. she would bring her kids fa- Friday to my house and they eat, they sleep and they leave Sunday evening when they're about to wow. go to Monday. That time they were, yeah. they were somehow younger. The oldest, I think was both of our boys, they were like 10 or the oldest was maybe 12 or 13. So, and I would do the same. We would do that at least twice a month. And when I was awesome. having, like, you know, exam in school, she would call me, oh, Lydia, pass by. I cooked some food for you. I know this. Oh. Take the food home. Or maybe I will cook. Be like, you know what? Come take some isombe, pondu, so you can have something for your family. I think sometimes we can exchange support in a way. Don't always yeah, for sure. for, Oh, nobody's supporting me. I always tell people everything you need, make sure you are able to give it. If you can, then it's going to be easy to come back to you. Anyhow. Yeah. I think, I think, I think you also need to learn how to ask. Yes. Like, I, like, like, uh, I think Sitra and I realize we're not really good askers of help. Um, mm-hmm. because we're thinking about like, Oh, we're not really going on date nights and stuff. And it's always like, Oh, well, the baby is here, but it's like, we have friends. We could mm-hmm. ask friends to babysit yes. him, right? Mm-hmm. And they would keep him and things like that. And mm-hmm. we do it for our friends, but we just didn't have the reflex to ask for the help. And so I think sometimes it's also just getting into the habit of, like you said, if you ask for something and then they help you and then you give it back yeah. and then you kind of create that community, mm-hmm. that's also definitely an option, right? Yeah. And it's available. There is, there is nothing wrong with paying back with services, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't really yeah. be stuck in that culture. Oh, they did something for me. They expect me to do something. Yeah, this is really, it yeah. takes a village. We pay back, <laughs> you know, services to eat yeah. and there's nothing wrong with it. Anyhow, let's yeah. talk about wellness because beyond the yeah. health, it's about wellness, you know, and we want to hear ways that you really incorporate or include wellness practice wellness in your life as a working mom you know yeah really do that so yeah this is great because to be honest I'm still struggling with it with consistency but the way that I'm starting to do it is put it in the calendar like it has to be in the calendar if it's not in the calendar it's not gonna happen Mm -hmm. um so like I was talking about dates with Sicho right now we put it in the calendar like every two weeks that's nice. and it's like the it's like the most unromantic thing ever, <laughs> but it's it's true, man. So what but do you call very... it as romantic? Because you plan it, because it's in the calendar. Yeah, I find it but... more romantic because it's so intentional. It's like yeah, that's what I was gonna say. But I was like, but it's intentional, and we know that if it's there, we will respect it. Yes. If we just talk about it and it's not there, we will replace mm-hmm. it with something else. Like something else will come up and, mm-hmm. and, um, and will take over. So it's in the calendar now and we're trying to keep to it. Um, mm-hmm. and I would also say like, um, prioritize time as well with your girlfriends, right? Like I was saying. So I work a lot. Like I work a lot, but a couple of months ago, I was like, I'm tired and I was like, life sucks. Like Mm -hmm. I'm being dramatic, but Mm -hmm. I realized like we had gotten into this routine, right? Like we were talking, we were just going and going and going and we weren't slowing down, you know? Mm -hmm. So then I really sat down with myself and I was like, okay, what is it that you need right now? You know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I need a vacation. Like I've been working since uh february march and mm-hmm. it had been four months of me working after i had been on mat leave so i was overwhelmed um and then i was like i need time with my friends mm-hmm. and a lot of my close friends are in montreal so i was like okay girls trip in montreal you know mm-hmm. and so i took a week off and i just stayed home it was a staycation 
And at first I was like, ah, it's a staycation. I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I was tired. So even mm-hmm. just the time to rest, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, I went to Montreal. We had a girls weekend. We went out. We partied. Mm-hmm. It was so much fun, you know. And we were really intentional about, like, this is the weekend we're hanging out, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, a good reset. Yes. And I, was, I came back and I was like, oh, yeah, let's go yes. let's do it again, you know. Mm-hmm. And now we're talking about, oh, let's do it again in the fall, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like you're doing something every weekend or you're doing something every day, mm. but it's like be intentional about doing what you can. So I would say that's more from the emotional and mental, mental health side of wellness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then from the physical side of, of wellness. So I used to run, I used to be like into like high, intensity fitness you know mm-hmm. um and i would go to the gym like three four times a week and then obviously yeah mat leave happened maternity like i got pregnant maternity leave happened actually when i was pregnant i was working out but mm-hmm. after i fell off you know mm-hmm. and i was really trying to go back but i was really resisting the idea like it wasn't working yes so i started thinking about why is this not working like why mm-hmm. am i really resisting and then I realized, like, I want to do something fun. Like, I don't want yes. it to be high intensity suffering anymore, you know. Um, so I started belly dancing. Yes. So now I go, yeah, so now I go belly dancing once a week. It's mm-hmm. fun. It's just I'm getting out of my house and I'm dancing. I love dancing and mm-hmm. it's it, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we usually try to go for a walk or like a family walk slash mm-hmm. family run mm-hmm. once a week. And then now I just started spinning once a week with a friend. So yes. I'm I'm trying to be like softer with myself, yes. you know, because I feel like life goes so fast. Like I need to learn yeah. how to how to slow down. Mm-hmm. So that's how I approach wellness these days. That's really really nice. Um, recognizing that every season comes with its blessings and its challenges. Yeah. And I think I like that you say, you know, you were trying to fight the idea that maybe this is not serving anymore. And I yeah, think it wasn't working. being lucky enough to have the wisdom that maybe I need to try something new because we do evolve, our body do change, especially uh, women. I think there's a book called, is it? I don't know if it's a book or something or a sermon that I listened to, Season of a Life of a Woman, a Woman. Uh, especially we go through stages body changing hormones babies uh snatching back gaining weight it's like a whole whole whole, um yeah yeah so yeah it's good to know you know do i need to change something or maybe do i need to adapt a new way of caring for myself i love that girlfriends always really Help us to refresh our mind and they really uh, do it. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so tell me, when we hear motherhood often, I think we hear not negative things, but it can scare people who do not have kids to have children. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I think for my family. I, I hope, based on their feedback, even I was speaking with my my uh, my sister um, a few minutes ago, and um, at the beginning I used to tell her, "Just have a just have a baby. I'm gonna raise your baby. I'm gonna raise your baby." She's <laughs> baby. And I, I can tell that she's always inspired on you know maybe my motherhood style, ways that yeah. I make you look like you know it's so good to be a mother. So I really yeah. need to shine the light on that, uh, you know, some of the rewarding aspect of being, let's, let's even removing the title working mom, just being a yeah. mom. What are the most, you know, what are the most in your experience, in your experience, rewarding aspect as being a mom? And also I need to know, how have you been able to grow personally and professionally since, you know, you became a mom? Yeah, I I love being a mom. Like I I really do. Like it's so, it's nice. It's a lot of work. It's hard work, mm-hmm. but it's nice. But before I go in the nice parts, mm-hmm. I will put a disclaimer that you have to prepare for motherhood. And I mm-hmm. think that 
sometimes when people struggle, maybe they were not ready. And I, you're never ready to be a mom. But yeah. I went to therapy before I, I became a mom. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, I have some issues, man. We all do. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I have some, I was going to call it garbage. <laughs> oh. But I have some things to work through, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to therapy. I went to therapy, talked through it. Mm -hmm. um, before I got pregnant, like when I was thinking of starting a family, when I got pregnant, the first mm -hmm. few months, I was still seeing a therapist. So mm -hmm. I was mentally and emotionally ready. Yes. As ready to mm -hmm. be a mom as you can be. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say, if you can, if you're planning for children, it's good to prepare to be a mom. Mentally. Am, am I being judged right now? No, why? No, no, don't, don't, don't say that. No, 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 no. I, I'm okay with it. Cause with my three kids, I never had to sit down and be like, I want to have a child. Oh, I well, never you know. had to, to plan or prepare on it, anything. Sometimes I'm like, God is so gracious. Really looking at me, be like, you know, I'm giving you a child, another one, another one. Until I was like, okay, okay, okay. But I love what you're saying. Honestly, preparing if you can, that's yeah. really, really yeah. great. Maybe that's the plan. But you can also prepare physically too, right? There was, uh, there was at one point like a whole trend around be fit to get pregnant, get fit mm -hmm. to get pregnant, which is like mm -hmm. being pregnant takes a toll on you. So get ready mm -hmm. for it, right? Anyway, yes. so, but that's the plan. Mm -hmm. But so, but I'm putting it in context because I like being a mom because I was ready. I know myself. Like, yeah. had I not been ready, <laughs> I would have had a totally, probably a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. But also to come back to what you said, I think God gives us children. Mm -hmm. Our children are meant to be ours. You know, mm -hmm. like your children were supposed to be Lydia's children. Mm -hmm. So you were the perfect mom for them, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever your circumstances were. You are the perfect mother for your children. So never stress mm -hmm. about the situation mm -hmm. not being perfect. But anyways, mm -hmm. what do I like about being mom, uh, being a mom? It's brought clarity and it's brought a sense of urgency yes. to my life. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. now it's like I had all these plans I wanted to do. Now it's like, now it's time to execute, you know, wow. because now it's like, yeah, what are you waiting for? And um, am I truly doing what I say I'm going to do? Because mm -hmm. if I'm going to be raising even a certain way and saying some things, I want to be the type of mom who does what she says she will do, mm -hmm. not the mom who says and then does something different, mm -hmm. you know? So am I moving the needle in the right direction? And mm -hmm. for me, it's become very easy to see what helps me move in the right direction and what doesn't help me move in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, it has also helped me bring some perspective to my life, you know, mm -hmm. like before I used to be so stressed about work and about like some problems and now I mm -hmm. go and it's not as big anymore, you know, like yes. um, you will like sometimes at work people will fight and they will have meltdown. Yes. And I'm there like, Y'all need to learn how to regulate your emotions. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you're not two years old. You're, you're mm -hmm. not a two year old who is still learning what emotions mm -hmm. are and, mm -hmm. and how to live life. You know, mm -hmm. so I think it's brought some perspective. And then just seeing him grow, I think it's so fun. Like mm -hmm. um, knowing, like, oh my god, like we made this child. You know, like mm -hmm. it's a miracle. It really is a miracle. Yes. Um, but uh, like nurturing someone and spending the quality time with them and mm -hmm. seeing him learn what I'm mm -hmm. teaching him. Like it's a lot of fun. And he brings a lot of um, joy and discovery because kids appreciate yes. everything. Everything is new. Everything is amazing. Mm -hmm. So it forces me to slow down because mm -hmm. I never really slowed down before, but now I have to slow down because he's discovering this world so it's like mm -hmm. i'm rediscovering the world as well Absolutely. In, in a certain way. Mm -hmm. yeah wow that's really um especially that you're talking about imena ways uh he's really changing so many things i think yeah. when we have children they totally change us in many ways they melt our hearts um i think 
as when I'm talking with my siblings, they're always like, oh, Lydia, you know, I think you are too emotional. I think you are this and that. And I have to sort that I'm like, okay, I'm really speaking as a mom right now, not as just yeah. everything. The way, you yeah. know, how I tolerate more now, things yeah, I tolerate, maybe. it's like they really change your, like, everything. And I really love it. Yeah, but you know, women, our brain changes, eh? Mm -hmm. Your brain changes when you become a mom. Like, that's the science. And so it's kind of crazy, right? Because I'm still processing it. Because it's like, yeah, but I'm the same person. Like, it's still me. But it's like, yeah. Does it change in a positive way? Yeah, I think so. I think it makes you a little bit more human. I think being a mom (laughs) brings out your humanity more. Don't you think? you were human oh my goodness <laughs> if you haven't told by now I'm I'm a little intense so for me it has slowed me down and it has kind of yeah it yeah. has kind of made me a little bit more it's not that it's made me more human I think it's just helped me tap a little bit more in my emotions than I was yeah. before yeah yeah absolutely yeah motherhood really do change women yeah either in a positive way, either um, we deal with, you know, we go through a lot of changes. That's another conversation. Anyhow, um, you were talking about like, you know, motherhood, I need to know. What is your favorite thing about your son, Imena? Because, you know, motherhood changed you, you know, let's talk about him. What is your favorite thing about him? Uh, He's very joyful. Like he's cheeky. He's very cheeky. Yeah, so he's always like uh, playing, and he's very playful, and mm-hmm. so he brings uh, he brings a lot of joy to our lives. He's like a happy kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's my favorite thing. That's great. Okay, so in terms of you know, I'm wondering, actually, moms. Um, most of moms have like big dreams. And when you have yeah. actually kids, your dreams expand. Like, you know, because yeah. you're no longer thinking just about yourself. Now you have to really think about, you know, other humans. And sometimes it might feel like, you know, if um things that I want to pursue, sometimes I speak with women, the women who are like, oh, Lydia, you are so strong. You have children. Yeah. But look at the things that you're doing, all of it. Like, you know, I really did my entire studies raising my babies because I had my children wow. very, very young, um, mm-hmm. right, right after high school. And, wow. you know, they're like, oh, Lydia, you're strong. All of this. But I'm like, if I don't do it, what, what, what are you thinking? I'm not going to go to exactly. the I'm 50 years old. Like, I have no choice. I made these babies. My life can stop. However, yeah. I used to really encourage women in that way, like, you know, oh, you gotta do things. But more I experience a lot, more mm-hmm. I realize that raising children itself is so hard. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I did my undergrad having raising babies, right? Now I'm mm-hmm. doing, you know, close to completing my master's, raising kids, including teenagers. When I was doing my undergrad, there was balance. Like, yeah. I think I was, like, in control. And my mm. kids were very young. But now yeah. I feel like I'm no longer in control. And when women come to me, oh, Lydia, tell us, you know, I want to be, I want to do like, I'm like, don't. As your kids, <laughs> when, you're ready, when you're ready, come back. So it can be, you know, not that what I'm t- I'm telling them based on my experience, but I want you to encourage um, moms with big dreams. Moms yeah. who feel like, you know what, you know, I feel hopeless. I think I'm missing out on my career, on my oh. dreams. I think, you know, there are moms you talk to. There's this friend of mine. She's having the second baby. She's like, you know, these were my dreams or my business. I have to stop everything, you know. Any message you can yeah. share with those moms? Hard. Uh, first, I would say that it gets better. It's just a season of life, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting because I, I have a friend, her baby is three months younger than mine. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about how when we're about 
the babies were about 14, 15 months. Mm -hmm. We both woke up and were like, I'm back, you know. I woke up one day and I was like, Michaela is back. Like, I feel yes. like myself again, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's good for now. It's a season. And I'm sure there will be other seasons. Mm -hmm. But it's a season and give yourself, yourself grace through that season, mm -hmm. you know. I think that I was listening to a podcast about setting goals. Mm -hmm. And then they were talking about how we set too many goals. And then because we set too many goals, we feel like we're failing, mm -hmm. but it's because we set too many. Mm -hmm. And that they were say, saying, like, set one goal and then make everything else work around that one goal that mm -hmm. you have, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, for you, your goal was you want to do your undergrad, you want to finish your studies, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. everything kind of works around that. So what is that mm -hmm. one goal that you want? And it's okay if the one goal for now is, I'm pregnant, man. I'm tired. Like, I just need to get through this it's pregnancy. It's a goal. It's and a that's goal. a goal. Yeah. And raising a human being is, being pregnant is hard work, man. Like, oh. raising a human being is work. And so if for the next two years of your life, that's all you're doing, all quotes, unquote, that's great. That's lofty. Like, you've raised a being in your stomach, now in your belly, and now you're raising a little human. Like, that's mm -hmm. a lot of work. I think we need to put respect on that, and we need to acknowledge the work that goes into that. Mm -hmm. And then I would say it's never too late, right? Like, we can always start over. If there's something you don't like in, in your life, if you're not mm -hmm. happy with your job, it's never too late to start over. Like, yes. we're very young. Uh, we're very young. We're in a country that has a lot of opportunities that has a lot of ways to do things i mean you and i were talking and it's 9 p.m mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and it's because the kids went to bed so mm -hmm. start with one day at a time and then yes. make make it count right mm -hmm. um and then the last thing i would say you kind of mentioned it earlier is that it's okay to take a pause like you don't have to be with your child or your children all the time like they're gonna be okay you know um, I listened to this other woman called Esther Perel. I don't know if you know her. She's uh, mm -hmm. this French therapist. She lives in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And she was comparing. She does a podcast around relationships, like mm -hmm. romantic relationships and friendships. And she was comparing the American way, the North American way of raising kids and the European way of raising kids. And she was saying, like, in North America, like, we are very cuddly of our kids. Like we have to be at every game. You have to be at yes. every recital. You have to be doing everything all the time with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And she was saying that's not a sustainable way of living. Yeah. Because it leaves no space for you to do anything, mm -hmm. you know. And then she was saying like in Europe, parents are not at every game. Parents are not <laughs> at every recital, you know. Like they will drop you off and they'll go do their thing and then they'll come and pick you up, mm -hmm. you know. And then they will... Uh, they will come maybe to like the big ones, the important ones, but they yeah. will prioritize, you know? So mm -hmm. I think it's important to acknowledge that you can want to take a pause from your kids. Yes. <laughs> and it's not, and it's not a bad thing. It doesn't, it doesn't make you a bad mom mm -hmm. that you're like, today I'm going to take a day off and go to the spa, like you were mm -hmm. saying, you know, because mm -hmm. the kids are at school and it's a Friday or it's a Thursday or whatever day. Or, to the, or I'm just going to lay in my house and do nothing. <laughs> or I'm just going to take a weekend and go away with my girlfriends. Yeah. Um. So I would say th those three things, like, mm -hmm. it gets better. It's just, it's a season. Mm -hmm. And if you're not happy, one needs to change. Yes. And take, take the first step. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, it's okay to take a break from your kids. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think those are really, really great advice. And I often hear people, oh, marriage is not achievement. Motherhood is not achievement. It is an achievement. Yeah, and it's a lot I'm of work. saying this because if you are a mom raising your, your children, maybe not working at the same time, maybe not working yeah. on that project, people might make you feel like, you know, oh, you are not the mom who's doing it. But I'm yeah. telling you, you are really doing beyond bigger work because you are mm -hmm. raising humans. You are really, I don't even know how I yeah. can say this, but I think if your goal 
like you said, you you have to prepare yourself for having babies, right? For having a baby. Mm-hmm. There's even yeah. someone who can prepare. Okay, I'm gonna work hard, save money. When I have my child, I'm not gonna do anything else for five years. That's okay. Exactly. Even mm-hmm. if it's not about money or anything, if you decide that raising your children is your goal, is your achievement, is that moment, that is your goal, that is your achievement. I was telling yeah. someone when we celebrate Women Day, I'm like the type of women we celebrate says a lot about yeah. about the society we have today. Because mm-hmm. we invite a woman who is, is an inter- entrepreneur, a woman who it's more like professional women in the corporate world, professional. We don't invite those women who are caregivers of their families, women yeah. who are maybe, um, yeah, just raising their families, cooking for their families. I was looking yeah. at this grant the government is, um, is calling for, uh, people to apply for. Uh, yeah. nominating caregivers, uh, good caregivers in their communities, not oh. caregivers in a professional way, caregivers who take care of their families. Maybe they yeah. have you know, either a child or taking care of their parent. I was like, this yeah. is really great. So I think yeah. seeing motherhood as an achievement, as a life, you know, uh, achievement, a goal, that's really big. Yeah, I mean, because they are influencing human beings, right? Like you are raising well-balanced children, you know, and you're giving them love, you're giving them self-esteem, you're educating them. Like moms are the best people, parents are the best people for their children. So being with them and as they grow and nurturing them, there is nothing bigger than that, right? Absolutely. I've started for, it's been a few years, whenever I introduce myself, I'm a mom first. And yeah. in my skills as well, anytime I'm applying for something, I'm including my mom's, my motherhood skills. Cause, you know, yeah. I can lead yeah. my children, you know, I have three boys, different activities, different games. They don't like the same food. Three boys, they don't like the same food. They don't like same sport, different <laughs> uh, clothes, tastes. Like they have nothing, like most of nothing in common. So if I can be able to accommodate, you will have to go on in our oh, oatmeal. I don't like oatmeal, pancake. The other one, not my favorite. But at the end of the day, mm-mm, you're going to eat what I serve. But the yeah. other days I'm like, okay, I'm going to spoil you today, but. So those things, these are life skills, you know, think about a mom, you can really juggle all of that, really use those skills, celebrate yourself in that way. But let's talk about, as we end this conversation, mom in chief. Yeah. What is mom in chief? Because we have you on social media talking to us about mom in chief. So what does it mean to moms with big dreams to be mom in chief? Yeah, so it's interesting, right? Because I I remember it. If I go back to that post you're referring to, I I remember when Michelle Obama, she was first lady at the time. She had said like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm mommy in chief first. and people got really offended by that because they were like, "You're first lady. How are you gonna say your mom first? You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then when I became a mom, I understood what she meant. You know, um, because first ladies they come and they go, mm-hmm. but her children she's their mom like she's the one who is there for them like they don't care about anybody else right and so for me Mm -hmm. it's the same I really think in order to understand that you have to be a mom or you have to be a caregiver and take care of someone so Mm -hmm. for me it's like well Imena he's my son like I know best what's good for him you know Uh, there is nobody else well it's possible but I am the best person to to raise him right now, mm-hmm. you know, if I can, mm-hmm. to the best of my ability. Um, mm-hmm. And so work can fire me tomorrow and that'll be yes. okay. It's a corporation. Mm-hmm. They can always hire someone else, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but I, I am an important piece of my family. And so for me, that has really shifted... Mm-hmm. how I approach my life like we talked yes. about right like mm-hmm. 
before, obviously, I was like a single woman. I was just doing whatever I wanted uh, mm -hmm. on my own time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's like, no, you, you're a wife, you're a mom. So I have a little baby that depends on me. We are the one who chose to have a baby. Like he, he didn't call and say, like, I want to be born, right? So mm -hmm. we have to make sure that he has the best life that he can have. Mm -hmm. but and that we are setting a good environment mm -hmm. for him to grow up in where he feels supported to become his best self mm -hmm. and so for me that's what it means be a mommy in chief wow thank you so all mom in chief we really i almost cried there like I started like tearing up. I was like, get it together, get it together, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are mom in chief. Honestly, we moms, we have really, really uh, big skills, big gifts. Um, and there's something I always, you know, I always, I often hear that even moms actually have the ability to see their children calling or gift or strength at the very yeah. young age. You can, yeah. well, the way I see my children now, I can see that their strength now, it's something that I recognize even when they were babies. I could wow. see it. So I think really being a mom is beautiful. Anyhow, bonus question. Oh if God. you could have one dream come true, let's see a miracle happen. One dream that you have come true right now, what would it be? I want to live in an African country with a cook, a cleaner, and a chauffeur. That, that's you know, the vision. That's do you the know goal. something I told someone? People used to desire, you know, uh, uh, I'm a single mom now. I'm like, I don't need the man to, you know, I need the man to marry me and take me back to Africa. Like, take me back to Africa. Leave that VIP life. I need that. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm ready to be a wife. You see a wife material? Like, wake up, put on my makeup and comment. Oh, clean my beans, do this. I am telling you. Yeah, I'm ready to give someone a menu, you know, discuss the menu for the week and then give them money to go do groceries on my behalf. That's the life. That's the life I want. Oh, my right God. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, if you, I think if you have means in Africa, yeah, it's the best life you can live there. Yeah, that's that's the asterisk, right? If you have means, if like, you have means, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we cannot forget that it's not the reality for everyone. But if you could, it's not in Africa. I think in many, maybe in many countries, if you have means, you can really live the best life. So. Okay, I wish that dream will come a reality for you. And Amen. yeah, anything you want to share with the audience before we close? Um, thank you for having me. This was so good. Uh, if you're a mom, if you're thinking about being a mom, it's the best thing ever. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Um and I think you gain a lot from being a mom. You're giving a lot, but you also gain a lot from being a mom. So, uh, it, it's, it, it is worth the journey. Mm -hmm. That's, that's all I would say. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. And to all moms there, especially also to anyone who's wishing to become a mom. I think for the last few months, I've been praying a lot for, you know, women who want to have, you yeah. know, I have many friends who wish to have babies. It's not working mm -hmm. at this time, but, we are praying and we are wishing that that gift of motherhood happen to you in any way that will really make your heart happy. So we wish you that. Yes. Okay, thank you, Michaela. And anyone who want to see her, you better go to our page, see, or maybe share your IG handle if if you want to share yeah. it. Yeah, my, my IG handle is my name, Michaela Mutoni. Michaela oh. Mutoni, okay. Look for Michaela Mutoni. Go straight to the stories. Okay. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Have a lovely week. That's it for the week. We hope you gathered your dose of resilience for the week ahead. 
Follow Gen 365 Podcast to know when the next episode comes up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. Share with your friends, community, and family, and do not also forget to follow and share feedback or questions on our community organization social media at Beyond the Veil Mission on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Or learn more about our work via our website at www.beyondthevailmission.com. In the spirit of building resourceful, stronger communities, we can also help your community or business or organization to share your news and events on our podcast. Please email us for collaboration at podcastgen365 at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.